Hi. RTP is basically a shader system which renders terrain and other objects with uh, high-end shaders. RTP has been imported on Fresh Project. There are some other goodies, but we don't use them now. What we need to remember is that uh, RTP must be imported into default location, which is Relief Pack subfolder of assets. And it works using existing terrain objects. Here is one with the four layers, so I drag it into our scene. It has height map generated in word machine first. This is uh, exactly the same as on example scene. I set here the terrain size, uh, imported the height map, and four layers have been added using uh, Unity's built in uh, functionality. Yeah, here remember that Unity styling is not used in RTP. Actual layer styling is set in RTP settings main. It doesn't matter which textures have been used, because we can replace them later, but we need to remember to add them first before adding RTP component. Ok, so we added, but that's not all. We need to refresh in settings main. Oh, and that's the moment, RTP LOD manager has been added to scene. And this object handles RTP features used. By default shaders are not initialized, so let's do it. For one terrain we will use uh, materials feature and with four layers terrain we need only one pass to be compiled and used. And now the important step, platform we are working on must be selected. We are on DX11, on Unity 4.5 and higher, simply select them all and shaders compilation won't take any longer because Unity 4.5 compiles only used one. Especially when building projector, remember to recompile shaders adding actual target platforms. For lower Unity version, select the platform you're working on like I do here. It's DX11. And cut holes feature won't be used in our tutorial scene. Let's disable it for now. And we can recompile shaders. Please be patient, especially on the lower unit version. And now our terrain is up and running. And in some cases, after shader recompilation, we need to refresh RTP state again. And when RTP object is the first one added to the scene, we need to visit Perl in normal tab. And the Perl texture is added here by default. And here we see that this will initialize a combined texture used by shaders. Yeah, and these bumps are actually produced by our Perlin normal map. Here seen on grass layer. So uh, now we can add missing textures for our layers. We can drag and drop into slots for every layer. Normal maps, height maps, and this one, ok, and the last layer. And during this process it's good to know what happens in the background, because adding and replacing textures in slots here results in combining them in pairs. This texture is made from layers 0 and 1, and this from 2 and 3. We're counting from 0 and here we've got the height maps combined from layers 0 to 3 which are put into RGBA channels respectively so alpha channel of combined height texture is taken from last layer fourth counting from 0. You need to remember about keeping texture size of given type uniform which means that all height textures must be the same size here they are 2, 5, 6 and the same for normal maps, they all are of the same size and the same for diffuse texture which in our case are also 512. We don't need to follow normal map size, here this is coincidental, what we need is the same size of every texture. RTP will report it to you on console and can actually resize it in import settings 
also it can uh, change import type and a factory it enable flag so we need to remember about it as basically all is prepared now we can play with coverage using unity's terrain brush and looking from distance we see uh, detail patterns revealed it doesn't look good for cliff materials like here we can reduce the effect considerably yeah but meantime uh, i'd like to show you handy shortcuts focus on the scene view hover over grass layer and press l and we've got selected the same for cliffs i pressed l over cliffs and let's back into our tiling problem i'm using perlin slider here and to get quickly into Perlin settings, we just click this tiny icon. So we are here and we didn't need to go to settings and Perlin by hand. And back into uh, our layer settings using L shortcut. And we'll discuss Perlin settings later. By now I only reduce it on a grass layer because it doesn't look good when it's overused here. It's too bumpy. And let's select cliff layer again and let's play for a moment with UV blend settings. In opposite to main tiling we can change the tiling here independently for each layer. It works multiplicatively and we can also completely replace high frequency detail at distance. These features will be discussed later so don't adjust it too much, just increase a bit perlin for cliffs. And while zooming with camera, notice that our terrain looks very detailed both close distance and also pretty detailed at far distance. And now let's look at the, one of the most prominent features in RTP called uh, height blending. So as you see layers are not simply alpha blended but uses height maps to blend them. This can be even more obvious with different material like here. So let's replace cliff layer with big rocks texture. Height map, normal map. As mentioned before, when replacing textures in layer properties, RTP automatically rebuilds actual combined textures used by shader. And our rocks normals are now combined on RG channels here. Combined textures are used by shader while original ones are used in editor only. So this is how hail blending works here. Now we can focus on another feature which RTP does take its name from. Using relief mapping we can actually extrude our terrain. As we see over using the extrusion value doesn't look good because this is by default parallax mapping which is quite fast to render and in most cases this is enough. If you would like to see real parallax occlusion mapping POM, you need to enable it first here in the max LOD. Drop down and recompile shaders. So shaders will be larger, but you also will be able to switch um, between LOD levels runtime. And let's recompile. We need to do it after uh, any change made to LOD manager features. And after recompilation, uh, POM with self-shadowing will work. So we can see. I put the lower light and play with light rotation so we can see it. Additionally, I will change this parameter to show you where the shadows are placed. And to emphasize the effect, I will put light angle low and reduce RTP's ambient light. Yeah, here and put a bit stronger light. Yeah, and now we can play with the light and see self-shadowing moving around. Self-shadowing works only for POM shading level here. We can see it's without any shadows, with hard shadows and with soft shadows. With PM we've got no shadows. Yeah, it's back. 
And what is uh, very important to keep in mind that uh, by default the render path is forward, in default we've got it black. And we need a script to be attached to main light. This is the one. Okay, it is restored and the script is used to provide shader with a necessary lighting info. This is used by um, physically based lighting Fresnel effect and self shadowing. In the third, these effects are handled for one directional light. So this is more or less all I wanted to present you now. Of course, defining coverage using Unity's brush was only an example. In real situation, you will need to prepare them either in a third-party world machine or excellent terrain composer or using RTP's coverage editor which will be presented in one of the following tutorials.